action yesterday. Let's take a look at the highlights. Rich Stadium, Buffalo, New York. The Bills against the Colts. The two met earlier, and the Bills won a tough contest. Now it looks like the Bills are going to run away with it. Early first quarter action. The juice on the loose. Through the hole, the acceleration. Then eluding one tackler. Now that tackler. Cutting back as he did it. Two more tacklers can't down him before he scores the touchdown. Seven to nothing. Ferguson then throws to him twice for touchdowns. This is the first of the two. And quickly, the Bills assume a 21 to nothing lead over the Colts in what appears to be a growing rout. But it wasn't to be that way on the day. The score 21 to nothing. Ted Marsha Broder, the Baltimore Colts coach, a worried man, quite obviously. But with the score 28 to 7, Marty Domers on a fake field goal throws to Billy Olds out of Nebraska. And suddenly it's 28 to 14 and a growing ball game. Then, shortly before the end of the first half, Burt Jones is back, looking for a receiver, and finding the fleet-footed Roger Carr. He's off by himself, touchdown, and it's 28-21 to 21 in favor of Buffalo. Marsha Broda is breathing more easily. Then, watch Burt Jones, the gifted young quarterback who can run as well as pass as he goes 19 yards for a touchdown with the score tied 28 all and Baltimore leads. Then, as you see there, Joe Ferguson is whacked up, concussion out for the day. So Buffalo is now taking a beating. With the score, 42 to 28 Buffalo, Gary Morangi hits Bob Chandler to make it 42 to 35 in favor of Baltimore. With a minute 20 plus left, David Lee has to punt for Baltimore. He gets the punt off, but he's roughed up in the process by two of the Bills. Baltimore keeps possession and wins 42 to 35. That's Bum Phillips, the head coach of the Houston Oil, is now one of the toughest teams in the NFL. They must go against the Super Bowl champion Steelers at Three Rivers Stadium. Pittsburgh's leading here three to nothing, and the throw, Bradshaw to Swan, makes it ten to nothing, Pittsburgh. Early in the second quarter, the score's the same. Dan Pastorini punts for Houston to number 88, Lynn Swan. The ball off the face mask. It's recovered by number 33, Mark Cotton. He thus puts Houston in scoring position and banging in for the touchdown is 47, Ronnie Coleman. Houston trails 10 to 7. With a minute 27 left in the half, Bradshaw is back to throw an 8-yarder after apparently beginning a run for it to Larry Brown. Touchdown and it's 17 to 7, the Steelers lead. Near the end of the first half, Pastorini throws a pass intended for Billy White Shoes Johnson. It's intercepted by Mel Blunt. That stops the Oilers' scoring threat. Then, in the third quarter, Pittsburgh still leading 17-7. You see Dan Pastorini running the football and racked up. He has to temporarily leave the game. He came back later, as you all know. 2.38 left in the game, 17-10. Pastorini throws for Ken Burrow, double zero, interference against Mel Blunt. That sets up a tied touchdown for Houston, 17 all. Then in the waning seconds of the game, Bradshaw essays the pass, touchdown to John Stallworth, Pittsburgh 24, Houston 17. St. Louis at Philadelphia, veteran stadium, Philadelphia. The Eagles get an early 10 to 7 lead and Gabriel is hot. He throws right down the center to Poe James, and it's a touchdown, and that makes it 17-7 for Philadelphia, which had lost a week ago tonight, 42-3. This time it's Coyell, the St. Louis coach, who's worried. The Eagles are now leading 23-14. And watch Jim Hart. He can't find the receiver. He stakes in five yards. Touchdown from 23 to 14. It becomes 23 to 21. Then with three seconds left, the unerring Jim Bakken kicks the field goal. St. Louis squeaks by Philadelphia 24 to 23. The cards are six and two. Mile High Stadium, Denver, Colorado. Five inches of snow the night before. The Bronx with the ball, trailing the Bengals seven to nothing. Floyd Little bursting in for the score. That made it seven to six. Then a bad snap from center. The conversion thus fails. The Bengals retain the lead. 
A little more than five minutes left in the third quarter. Denver ahead 13 to 10. Kenny Anderson to Chip Myers. The lateral to Isaac Curtis. He goes all the way down to the four-yard line. Two plays later, Booby Clark goes in for the touchdown, and Cincinnati wins it 17 to 16. 24 to 17, the Chiefs over the Dallas Cowboys, and it's been a wild football weekend here in Dallas as some of the all-time greats have returned to Dallas to be presented to this capacity crowd here at Texas Stadium. They are voted by the Texas Sports Writers and the 7-Eleven stores. They distributed ballots. There you see John David Crow, one of the running backs of the strict is on this all-Texas team. And <laughs> we have had a lot of fun with this man over the years, Bobby, Bobby Lane. Lane. He was a second string pick to Sammy Ball. Six-time All-Pro and member of the NFL Hall of Fame, by Bulldog Singer. A legend in his time and for all of the years thereafter, Bulldog Turner out of Arden Simmons. Quarterback from Texas Christian and the Washington Redskins, six times All-Pro and charter member of the NFL Hall of Fame, Sammy Ball! Uh, you're looking at Doak Walker, and here comes Sammy Ball. He still holds a, several records, one of them uh, for average punch for a season. He was an incredible athlete. The Detroit Lions, there he four is. time ball pro. You'll Doak hear it now. Walker! The Doka, number 37, as Howard likes to say, and he was a great athlete. His popularity around here is such that you'd think he was still playing. Married to an Olympic skier, Skeeter Ware, was here with him. Went to a first hockey game ever with me. Bob Lilly, who just retired after a sensational career with the Dallas Cowboys. 25 Texas all-timers, Skipper. This is not just a local event. These are some of the greatest names in the history of the sport. We missed some of them. Uh, there's Kyle Rope, there's Marvin Upshaw, Bill Bradley, Bud McFadden, Jack Pardee, Del Shop, an old teammate of mine. And now, ladies and gentlemen, speaking for the Jay Hullab, who gave Howard a pair of cowboy boots at the beginning of the game. Present Mr. Bob Lilly. And Bob Lilly is going to speak for the team. On behalf of my teammates who represent the state of Texas, all-time professional football team. I wish to thank 7-Eleven and the Texas Sports Writers Association for making this day possible. I know this is a day that we'll all remember the rest of our lives. Again, thank you. And there they are, Bob Lilly speaking for the all-time Texas team. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, Kansas City versus the Dallas Cowboys is being brought to you by Sears Tire and Auto Centers, home of the Die Hard Battery and the Sears Road Handler Steel Belted Radial Tire. And we'll